G'day everyone, welcome to the How To Part 2 Titanfall 2 EVO Foam Tutorial. My name's Andrew DFT, let's continue the build. So when we left off from part one, of course we had all the detail here currently starting to raise. We built up the front foregrip, we built up the magazine section, but now what we want to do is go in and actually start to bevel out this edge and really make the design look a lot more like the nice 3D perspective it has on the original core design. So I won't waste too much of your time, we'll jump right in and continue with the build. Okay, so we left off last time having the gun looking something like this. At this point it's actually looking relatively cool, but all we need to do now is add a few more details and build up a few layers and bevel a few things. So we'll start off with this segment here, cut it free from the uh, paper template, and then cut it into its two separate stages. Of course they're marked out clearly with the vertical lines. Then what we'll do is we'll transfer it onto foam, flipping one of the templates, or both the templates to make a left and a right side. Then you can cut them out and make sure they're together. And before you separate the two pieces, what we'll do is we'll actually be, uh, cut it in half, so to speak, giving it a depth line about halfway through the foam and then simply chopping it in half. And then you can go ahead and cut them free. So you have the two separate pieces. Then all you need to do is grab your adhesive of choice and put them into position. You can slot them in just one after the other. You don't want them to sit seamless, but they should sit and cover majority of that forward grip section. Too easy. Now we'll start to work on some extra detail. What we'll do is we'll cut out this rectangle piece here from the template, put it onto the foam, making two. You don't need to flip the template because it's an identical uh, rectangle, so no matter which way you put it, it'll be the same. Then all we need to do is cut them free from the foam, and then we'll cut them in half, adding a depth line about halfway through that layer of foam, slicing it out, so we have a nice thinner piece. We can then use the template as a negative spacing to find out where exactly it should sit, then put a few lines in to mark out exactly where it goes, and then simply put it into position with your adhesive of choice. Now we're gonna to start to make the grip, the actual trigger area, a lot more rounder. So we're gonna bevel some edges. So what we'll do is we'll cut apart this perimeter line, the part on the uh, handle, and we'll add in that line for where it should be using the template as a negative space. We'll then place in a depth line about halfway through the foam. And then once you've got that depth line in, we can start beveling it out, being sure you have a nice sharp craft blade because we want to make sure that this part looks relatively good and it feels nice because you're gonna be holding it and you don't wanna have this edgy, broken foam piecing. So make sure you do cut it out nicely with that nice bevel technique and it comes clear and looks fine. Now that we've done that to the exterior, we need to do it to the interior, otherwise it might be a bit awkward to hold. So simply cut out the internal template, the one that is marked out, of course, with the uh, hash line, and then we'll simply use the template as the negative transfer to find out where exactly they go, and then add a depth line about halfway through the foam, just like we did on the exterior side. This one might be a bit tricky to cut out with the beveled, but just take your time and slowly work the blade around it. It should go pretty well. I've done it myself, so, I'm pretty sure you guys can uh, follow along and get it done nice and cool like that. Yeah. But before we move on, we will do this tiny little piece. Of course, this is where your finger will wrap around to pull the trigger. If we don't actually uh, put this mark in and bevel it out, it might be a bit awkward for you to actually hold because it will have this weird 90 degree where it should actually curve around. So simply just follow the same technique, putting in that line, putting in the depth line and beveling it off. Now to give the handle area some more detail, we'll actually add a section. So what we'll do is we'll cut out this template from the handle template, the larger one, and then transfer it onto foam, being sure to flip it so we get left and a right. Then what we'll do is we'll thin this out because it would be a bit unusual having this uh, giant thickness added on. So we'll simply add that depth line, cut it in half so we have the thinner pieces, use the template of course to transfer in where it should sit. And once you've got that marked out, you can simply go and glue it into position and it should sit there relatively fine. Even though your hand will be rubbing up against it, it won't move off because of the thinness it currently is. And of course, we've got the butt of the gun. We need to wrap this around as well. It does have quite a bit of detail, which we will tackle in the next uh, minute or two. But what we first need to do is round it off. So what we'll do is we'll cut apart the template, the far right section, and we'll mark in that line, the vertical line, and then the depth line. This will allow us to cut this section off using a bevel te technique, which is been like the prominent technique used in this uh, part two. But once we've got that cut off, we can then add another vertical line in just a quarter of an inch left of where we've just beveled. This is gonna allow us to put in all the initial detail that sits up on this area. But what we need to do first is we need to actually finish this section by lining in where it actually should end. So using the negative side of the template, 
we can then transfer those lines in and it will allow us to pinpoint where the handle separates to the actual trigger area. Now we're going to put that section on hold because we need to do the main beveling of the entire gun first before we can get back to that part. So what we'll do is of course we'll cut apart the template from the top left of this gun, this section here, and then transfer it onto foam so we can mark out where exactly it should sit. Then we'll slowly work our way down the gun on the top bridge, being sure to cut out all the templates and line them across, making sure that underline the horizontal one does go all the way through and make the gun horizontal if it is a bit wonky you might need to quickly update it with a long ruler or a straight edge to ensure that it is well straight because this is a main core line that runs through the entire gun and we want to make sure that this is perfect because when we get to beveling it which we're about to do by adding in a depth line along the whole spine of the gun about halfway through we want it to be perfect but before we do that beveling, what we need to do is cut out this internal section. Now this internal section is of course where the uh, charging mechanism would be. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut three quarters of the way into this section of the foam. We don't want to cut all the way through the one layer because that would leave us with some weird textured side if you left it there. So all you need to do is simply cut down in on a 90 degree angle and then go in on a horizontal and cut that section out. Once you've got that section cut out and it looks relatively good, what we need to do is go back and bevel the spine. Now this is going to be a very difficult part and I recommend you take your time and your patience and maybe some practice on scrap foam, but this is the most important and the most difficult part of this build in its entirety. But what you are doing is you're beveling on a bit of a bigger scale all the way down the two segments on both sides of the spine. It will give a lovely beveled edge, but you do need an absolutely sharp blade which I highly recommend you swap out for one on each side. That way you're ensuring the blade is 100% sharp and you get the best detail possible. Then once you've done that and it looks great, what we can do is we can finish off that butt section. What we need to do is add in this vertical line then actually bevel it off. Because we've now beveled the main spine, it's kind of changed the way that ended in that corner. So we simply need to update that to make sure it's flush and runs with the actual flow of the bevels. Then what you can do is also follow through with those vertical lines that we added in prior to this. Then what we'll do is we'll cut apart the template, this back section marked here, and place that onto the foam. We're actually going to transfer this whole segment on so you can draw the whole outline that you currently have for it. Of course it's a bit uncompleted, that's because we cut off the top section to do the beveling. So all you need to do is cut free that little rectangle and then finish it off by using the negative space to transfer it on so you have that sitting there. Now luckily because we've already cut out the charging mechanism area, we can start to go in and add the detail. So what we'll do is we'll cut out this part of the template and we'll slowly work our way down, cutting out all the individual layers. Now we're not going to actually make layers as so to speak, we will just give the impression that there are layers in detail there by simply cutting out the templates and marking them as lines. Of course we'll do the scoring technique at the end which will bring out all the detail and give the impression that this does have quite a bit of detail and has some layers and intricate systems to it. And then the very iconic pieces of course we need to add to this SMG are these horizontal, not horizontal, sorry, diagonal circle or elongated circle pieces. I never know the actual terms for these shapes, but it's a polygon nonetheless. All you need to do is use a craft blade, cut them out, and then transfer them on using the negative space. Do it lightly with a pen and then go back and clean it up to make sure it looks relatively good. And then what we'll do is we'll add in this little section that sits at the top bridge of the gun. We'll make that out of a separate piece and we'll add it to it. Of course, we don't need it to be the full thickness it is, so we'll uh, cut those in half. Actually no, we'll make it a quarter of the way through, that way it's a bit more thinner. So add a depth line about a quarter of the way through, and then simply slice them in half, slice them free, and then glue them into the position, like so. Now of course we do need to add the back section parts, but before we do those we need to establish where everything is going to sit relative to itself. So what we'll do is we'll cut apart the template, and then we'll lay it onto the foam and mark out this vertical line, which is of course the right far end of where the template actually stops. Then you can follow the vertical line all the way down and it should meet this section here. Of course this is now separating and giving us two uh, sections of this gun and breaking everything into a kind of compartment look. Now what you can do is of course cut out the template like we did at the front of the gun and transfer those two uh, diagonal, not horizontal, diagonal uh, circle lines in so that way they're marked. Now what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to add those details to those compartments to break them apart so the butt, the main core, and the front are kind of really distinguished and separated. So what we'll do is we'll cut out the template and mark in these sections here, marked on screen, too easy. 
Then moving on and we'll add in all these extra compartments here. So this is of course where the switch will be, no, sorry the switch, the safety trigger. So what we'll do is we'll cut apart that template and transfer that on those lines using the negative space. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add the last remaining square into position. Now we can actually add this as an extra layer, just because why not? It adds some more 3D aesthetic to this design. So of course, simply transfer it on, giving yourself two of them for the left and the right, cutting them out of the foam, putting that depth layer about halfway through the foam, and then cutting them free. You'll then need to use the template itself to lay out where exactly they're gonna sit, so that way we get them looking nice. And then we'll just simply glue them into position and we'll leave it at that. So that's it, part two, done and dusted. You've made a lot of progress so far on your rifle and we're nearly getting towards completing it. All we have to do is a final few touch-ups, like adding in all these rails, and that is a tedious process. Believe me, it was fun recording the process for this tutorial, let alone having to make it. So, we'll get there. But for everything else, it should be pretty simple. Right now, you've got a good understanding of what you had to do so far to get to where we're currently needing to be. You've learned a lot of techniques and hopefully you'll learn a lot more and hone them as you go. So if you enjoyed the video, of course, give it a like. That way it lets me know you'll enjoy the content and I'll continue to create more. Now all that's left is to go ahead and click on part three. Thank you very much for watching guys. Catch you later.